so I'm using something that we have in particle physics all the time. This is interaction of particles, invisible particles, with various detectors, making those particles detectable. So um, what I want to focus on today is reaction of one of those types of detectors. Um, specifically, I'm going to be talking about something called scintillation. But before we go into scintillation, because that's a very specific kind of word, I want to start with something that you might have heard before, which is fluorescence. Uh, fluorescence is something that we typically use on the stars that we put on the ceiling as kids uh, that glow in the dark. Um, well, that's kind of phosphorescence, but let's ignore that part. Um, so fluorescence is really glowing in the dark um, and things like that. It is something that we have encountered. Um, and actually, fluorescence is something that is very, very useful also in our everyday lives. So I first have a question for the ones watching. Thank you very much for watching. Um, which thing is fluorescence not used for? So we have A, checking banknotes for authenticity. B, detecting scorpions in the desert. C, analysis of biological processes. And D, improving plant growth. Um, I will answer this just slightly later, but first I just want to show you some really cool things that glow. So the light that I have here is a UV light. UV is a type of light that is invisible to human eye. However, today you can see a bit of a glow because typically UV torches do have a glow for safety reasons, um, because no one really wants you to check UV light by looking at them directly. That would be a horrible idea because UV light has higher energy than visible light. That means that it can damage the tissues a lot more. So we need to be careful and I will make sure to always point this downwards and not in my eyes. So if you ever encounter UV lights, never point them towards your eyes. Um, and I will start with what I already teased in at the very beginning. So the very first thing that I want to do is I want to show you why I don't wear um, any nail polish. So you can see the ends of my fingernails are fluorescing. In fact, many different things all around us are fluorescing. For example, You've probably all played with um, markers before. I have one orange marker here. Nothing special in the dark, but you can really see it glow once I put it under UV light. The same thing happens to many different um, toys, like this one. And I even found some pencils, like this one over here. Um, what you could see also um, in our everyday life, well, maybe not so everyday life, is something that, um, well, Blanche is already hinting at in the um, chat. So in the club, if you go ever to a nightclub where they have so-called black light, uh, now what we get is we get fluorescence of white stuff. So, for example, one thing that fluoresces would be, of course, fabric. I have white string over there. And typically, also our teeth. So teeth are also nicely fluorescent, so you can see them looking really scarily now um, in my mouth. Typically in clubs, what they would have is a black light that is not such a strong source of UV light. Uh, so, of course, it is safe to dance in a club that has UV light, but I wouldn't necessarily recommend looking into that um, light source. That was it for fluorescence. Well, the first part of the fluorescence. And before I continue to scintillation, uh, I just, of course, want to answer the question um, that we had before. And indeed, 
um, as my favorite experiment, or otherwise known as Michael, um, said, fluorescence in some case, in some ways, is used uh, for all of them. So, actually, um, one of them is not direct use of fluorescence, and that would be helping plants grow. That is a common thing that people think that uh, fluorescence would make them um, help grow. Of course, we can use fluorescence in the light bulbs that we're using, but that does not um, directly impact how the plants are growing. But all the rest are something that we can uh, use fluorescence for. Um, I am especially, uh, I was especially surprised by one of them, by a dear colleague of mine, whom I also saw that is following this stream, um, so that would be Derek. Um, Derek lives in South Africa, and one of the things that he um, shared with me is that what glows in the dark are also scorpions. When we're talking about fluorescence, what is happening is a material gets a high energy light, for example, UV light, and transforms that into, so it reacts to that by absorbing it and it then it emits a light with lower energy. When we're talking about scintillation, scintillation is a similar process, but we're not reacting to higher, um, higher energy photons necessarily. We also do, but not only that, we are reacting, well, the material is reacting to ionizing radiation. So kind of connecting to um, what Adam was um, talking in the very first show. I have two different transparent blocks. They look basically the same. They look both like plastic. One of them is slightly dirtier than the other. Um, that's because one of them has been used a bit more often. Um, and one of them is special, while the other one isn't. So I have my UV light, again, works with a toy very nicely. And now, if I go over this one here, you can see that basically there's nothing really special happening. But if I go to this one here, you can see a really, really, really nice glow. This is how, at CERN, and elsewhere as well, are detecting ionizing radiation, or actually we're using this to detect the energy of particles. When the particles deposit their energy, they emit ionizing radiation, and that ionizing radiation uh, causes our scintillating crystals to glow. In this case, it's of course a nice blue glow, but I also have another... Um, piece of plastic that looks like this. It's a bit more yellow. And this one glows even better. It glows so much that actually I am now illuminated as well. So only by getting light out of things like this, we can measure how much energy particles have when they're emitted either from a particle collision or from a radioactive source. And just so, I don't only show you how it happens with light. I can't ha um, show you how it happens with particles because they're busy being um, accelerated around CERN at the moment. Um, what I can show you is an actual example of this crystal. These crystals, so the one that I showed you before, those are plastic scintillators. Crystals like this are used in our detectors. So this is used in one of our detectors called CMS. This piece over here, what is fantastic about it is not only that it's scintillating, but also that it is 86% made of metal. So 86% of this is metal. That makes this rod really, really heavy, but still it is completely transparent. Um, of course, once we have ionizing radiation going through, what we would get is we would get photons coming out of this crystal. These crystals have to be grown and they're growing for several days before we can get them to this final size. And for the end, just because I think it's really popular to end a show with some fire, 
Um, I have a nice little candle here. This is all that I could improvise um, very last minute when I saw that people are doing fire. And because it's sand, we have to be really safe. I'm not allowed to really use fire in my office. But I can make the um, candle glow slightly differently. 